Hi everyone, uh, here we're going to look at uh, how you would uh, set out a, um, a bastard hip roof or an irregular hip roof as it might also be called. Uh, here now we're, um, we should start by exploring the plan view to give us a deeper understanding of this um, bastard or irregular hip roof. Then we will move on from that to show how the various rafters for this roof can be set out on an 8x4 sheet of plywood or similar. Here. You can see uh, what the plan view of this bastard um, hip end of a roof. As you can see, the hip line is not at 45 degrees. So uh, that's an indication straight away. So obviously the pitch on this surface is going to be steeper than the two sides here. Moving on from that, we're going to um, delve into it now here. Uh, here there's, your, there's your plan view when the, when the roof surface is removed. There's your hip line. There's your crown run line and there's your common run. And of course all runs, when I mention the word run, it's horizontal travel. Whenever I mention that word, it's on a horizontal plane. Those broken lines are drawn on a horizontal plane, in other words. Here we have a, an equal soffit width all round. Is what is typically what you would like to achieve, is to get an equal soffit width all round, which can be a bit difficult when you have a roof uh, that doesn't have the same pitch on the end as it has on the sides, which is the case here. So, uh, as you'll see going into this, uh, that will mean the wall plate will not be in line maybe with the outside of the wall plate uh, as it is on the end here. And uh, because the tail, in this case, on the common, where the common is, will be longer than the tail on, we'll say, the crown, which is this end is here, is where the crown is. So you can see there's a bigger gap there. So yeah, here you see, as even though the soffit width is the same, alone the tail runs of the common and crown after are not the same. That's what we're. That's the point I'm just making here. That's shown in green there. The tail runs, common tail run, crown tail run, and as you can see, they're not the same from the wall plate out. But as you can see, we're keeping the uh, soffit width as stated earlier the same though from the wall out. Now it can be pushed back as you can see, <clears throat> and you can have a greater soffit in this case on the side of the roof. If you want. Um, so there's there's a rectangle. I just want a quick word with you about that there. Uh, that rectangle <clears throat> that rectangle is made up of a common run, which is here, and the crown run, which is there, uh, of that red rectangle. And uh, there's a larger rectangle there as well, that going from here to here. That's the common run plus the tail run for the common. And uh, that's the crown run plus the uh, crown tail run. So that's a bigger rectangle. But th those two rectangles um, are have the same proportional relationship to each other. Just that this one is scaled down, the red one. That's the only difference in them. So usually uh, when you're setting it out, uh, that's a rectangle to take note of. Because the diagonal of that rectangle then will be your hip run. Moving on to the next slide here. Uh, uh, as stated there, yeah, if we hook our tapes uh, in from the corner there uh, in the crown run, we get to the center of the first common. That would be the center of the first common there then. And if we uh, hook our tape from the opposite direction, coming in from the corner, that's the center of our crown, just making that point. And as stated earlier, then the diagonal of that is our hip run. Here's an animation just to illustrate that point. That, that is our hip run taken there. And uh, the mathematically, using Pythagoras' theorem, that diagonal can also be calculated because you have the common run and you know the and the crown run as well, so you can easily calculate the diagonal using using Pythagoras' theorem. So uh, that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you want to remember that, yeah, that's Pythagoras' theorem. So here we're just making um just making the point that um there are three basic right angle triangles there just to help you visualize what's going on here. Just to be aware of the first one is the green one there that lists the common rafter and there's its rise indicated there and the rise of the crown which is the blue right angle triangle uh, they'll have the same rise there so you can just visualize them as right angle triangles going up onto the same rise from um, from the um, top of the wall plate that wall plate plane we we'll call it or it could be the top of the fascia plane as well which would be a higher rise but for we 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 we'll say it's the wall plate plane. So there, as you can see, the two rises are the same, uh, just that there's a shorter run on the crown, uh, right angle triangle, and uh, the third right angle triangle is the one that relates to the hip, the bastard hip itself. So again, you'll see it has the longest run of them all, and see, but we're pivoted down now 
onto the horizontal plane and it's now flat on the horizontal plane and I'm just going to pivot up there again just to make illustrate the point that it, they all all three of those right angle triangles we've just discussed do have the same rise so just important just from getting a deeper understanding of your bastard tape proof just bear that in mind that all three have the same rise so if you're setting out in a side square later on you know that the three the rise will do for the three rafters so um now that we've explored the plan view of this bastard hip roof, let's look at how to set out its rafters on a sheet of ply or similar, as mentioned earlier. Start by drawing the scaled down rectangle formed by the common run and crown run. You will then add in the width and thicknesses of each member, but at full size scale. And the following is an example um, of how this should look when it's set out on the end of a sheet of plywood. So we'll just go through the steps here now. Uh, so you take your sheet of plywood, uh, here's your sheet of plywood coming into the screen there, and uh, the right angle, or the, triangle, the rectangle we talked about earlier, uh, that's made up of the common by the crown run, and we'll come in off the fascia. So there's the rectangle we spoke about, uh, the common by crown rectangle, and now we're going up here on top here, you'll see <coughs> the intersections of the three rises. This is where the three rises meet before deductions right here. So on your sheet of plywood, if your thickness of your common is 44 millimeter, then that's from there to there will be an actual 44 millimeter. It's not scaled down. Your ridge board, I suppose, typically in in our country anyway, is uh, 36 degree, 36 millimeters. Okay, so you'd be drawing them in at that size. And there's the other common coming in there in green, and here's the crown, <clears throat> and it's just the cut off versions, of course, I've drawn there, and here is the fascia I've just drawn in as well, and this is uh, the end of your sheet now. So uh, when you're completely drawn it, um, I've broken the hip here because obviously I couldn't fit in the full hip because this is a scaled down version of this rectangle. So that's why I draw in the break there. And I often do that. I break the wall and I break the wall because just to indicate that it is broke. So um, moving on from that then next, um, we are going to uh, take away the sheet and uh, we're going to um, uh, focus on um, move on now on to uh, doing the uh, vertical section or ease detail uh, so currently we just got the bird's eye, eye, eye view or plan view perspective there on the end of that sheet but now we'll get the elevation or horizontal or sorry vertical sectional view um, uh, on this next um, on this next slide as we move into it here now so here we have the end of the sheet and we're moving up now and about approximately a third of the way up the sheet We'll draw in uh, a section through our, that's a section through our uh, fascia board or fascia backing. If you're putting PVC uh, onto it, it'd be termed as fascia backing board. And um, draw that in there. Um, uh, from that then, from this outside corner here, you're going to spring the pitch line uh, for our, um, for our one, one of our rafters. So that will be the crown rafter. So obviously, these pitches are given, uh, you know, uh, on your plans of your uh, house or whatever it is you might be building. So there's the there's the pitch line from the outer corner of your fascia, your crown pitch. And uh, next, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to um, after this, we're going to draw in the uh, common pitch, starting from the same point here. And uh, that basically represents the top line of the slate laths, or if it is slates you're using or whatever, so we'll assume it's slates. And uh, offset from that then I've drawn in the full crown rafter, whatever width you might be using on site, that's what you'll draw. Come up there to uh, one third into the rafter there then, and you'll be drawing in your bird's mouth. Just drew in the wall there, and drew in the wall plate then. And there's the overhang from here to here that we're trying to maintain all around. And uh, once we've done that, we'll be uh, focusing on the common rafter which is shown in green and here we have the common rafter then coming in and uh, here if you notice carefully we're bringing across the upstand and until we make contact here and that determines where our bird's mouth and wall plate will be here then on the common rafter as animated here now now if you think the bird's mouth's a bit skimpy you might have to consider using a deeper rafter which might be necessary anyway because it is a longer span or a longer run into the ridge board so so I stated, if you think the, bee, the bird's mouth beam on the uh, common rafter skimpy, then yes, definitely consider a deeper rafter. Just made another point here that sometimes you might have a, a joist um, uh, on the roof. So if you have, um, you have an opportunity here actually to put the wall plate on top uh, for the crown rafter. Okay. So uh, 
that's just another option but the great thing about setting out on the April 4 sheet is you can weigh up all those options so next we will have a closer look at the deductions that you will have to make at the rise point junctions where the ridge commons crown and hip meet uh, remember that whatever method you, you use to calculate the lengths of the rafters will only give you those lengths without factoring in the thickness of the roof members the following will show you how to calculate those deductions from the initial plumb line uh, based on the line diagram version of the roof. So, so as stated, the first plumb line um, before deductions would be uh, at this point uh, for all of the rafters. But after that, as you can see, deductions and offsets etc. have to be made. So that's why I just put in the point there that this is the initial plumb line, but that uh, the that will be gone after if in this case say for instance the common you'll be taking away half the thickness of the common well, then it will have gone from there to there sorry your new second plumb line uh, that hits the side of the ridge board will be there so as stated here just remember that all deductions have to be measured square off the plumb line not along the rafter because if you measure the deductions along the rafter you're not measuring on a horizontal plane and all the deductions the, 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 the true deductions here are can only be measured on a, a horizontal plane so here is the um, deduction for the crown after animated here, similar to the uh, common deduction, except instead of half the ridge, it's half the common, as you can see there. And you'll see coming in here the hip rafter, um, uh, you can see the deductions for the hip rafter coming here next. A bit more complicated, and uh, you can see that the point in the hip is is off center now. So that's the initial plumb line there. Uh, so you'll be you'll be uh, end up with that shape. Now that we've explored the deductions at the rise point junction, uh, let's look at the bird's mouth. Again, there is an initial heel line drawn at the corner of the wall plate, but the fact that the hip has a thickness and not just a line will mean that the heel line will have to be moved or offset. This is illustrated here now. So there's your initial heel line. Um, next, you will see uh, when you uh, join up the junctions, there's your junction there and there where it meets the outside corner of the wall plate. And you can see the heel line at the back of the bird's mouth then is slightly at an angle then as well when you're cutting it to sit in nicely into the wall plate. And that same corner drawn in right there is also to cut off the wall plate right there. So, but again, it's, that's what's great about setting it out on the sheet. You're going to have all that on your sheets later on when we're setting it out. So, um, uh, next we shall, we shall determine our jack rafters for this roof to include the jack diminishes that's the difference in the distance from one the length from the second jack to the third jack shall we say uh, we, we, we will start by measuring and marking the required jack center uh, on the wall plate so holding the measuring tape on the last common uh, rafter center line that you've marked in the wall plate keep marking the jack centers you're heading towards the wall plate corner until you get to the two shortest jacks uh, this will be the two jacks that we will start with in the following animation. So that's coming up here now. So you'll see um, again on your setting out sheet, uh, we're going to uh, draw in the two jacks on the plan view first, and then we're going to project that up onto the vertical section view. So here is your uh, your last two shortest jacks before you hit the corner of the wall plate. Center line drawn in there first, and there uh, there they are in color green and yellow. And you can see the white projection lines now going up onto the vertical section there on your sheet uh, on your gray ply which sheet shall we say and let's move up along the sheet here now and here's your projection lines coming onto the side of your common rafter so um here you've you've now you now have your two jacks uh, being drawn here now uh, there's your green jack and there's the yellow jack and here's the point the longest point and the shortest point of your long of the of that green jack shall we say and um, if you square when you're marking this out you can just you can actually leave the you can you could, you could leave the uh, jack rafter directly on your set out sheet and square that line and that line across uh, across the top edge of your set out sheet and um, draw a diagonal line then across the top edge of that uh, rafter to give you that edge cut for the for the set of jacks that's um, on the common side of the roof shall we say and uh, of course now once you have drawn two jacks here's the yellow jack same story here you can leave that line on this side i suppose and you could square that line across to the far side across on the top edge the, of this yellow jack and again draw a diagonal line then on the top edge of your um, jack to give you the jack edge cut which i can't see from this perspective but i think you can imagine what i'm saying so um 
Now, if you go from the longest point of the shortest jack to the longest point of the second uh, shortest jack, that distance there then is the, what's called the jack diminish, which is the difference in the length from one jack to the next jack to the next jack, all the way up along. So on your guide rafter or common rafter, you can mark those points all the way up along now until uh, until you hit the top of your common rafter and you'll be able to mark all your jacks straight off that common guide. So as well as the guide for the common, the, the jacks will also the jacks on the common side of the roof will also be marked off that uh, guide rafter. So just continue that then. If you project those lines then horizontally onto the crown rafter, you will get the other set of jacks which is a different set of jacks because the roof set at the, that end of the roof set a different pitch. And here you will get the two uh, shortest jacks on the crown end of the roof or, 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 or the bastard hipped end. And again, same process for the crown end of the roof. So that's the set of jacks for both sets of jacks uh, sorted there. Um, so um, after that, then uh, uh, the, um, the next area we focus on is... Uh, the dihedral angle now um the dihedral angle uh, is on the back of the hip and um, there's a few steps that you need to take and again you can do this on your setting out sheet that you've already so you, some of the lines you've already drawn on your setting out sheet will now be useful here now anyway so you have a start made already forget this angle uh, which is the good news so we'll delve into that now so that should be coming up here now certainly now so here's the right angle triangle that relates to the um the hedral angle and it relates to the hip so we'll just zoom in on that there just to make it more clear and uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick a point anywhere on the plan line of the hip here yeah. so draw a line square across there 90 degrees until it cuts both wall plates on the outside and uh, those points will be used la la later on uh, when we're marking the dihedral angle so take note of them put a little circle around them if you like on your setting out sheet if you want and uh, that line then that the length of that line will be swung using if you had a compass you can put the point of the compass here and swing it swing it swing that point down onto here so you're taking the length of that line down but you're bringing it along the uh the pla the uh, run line of the hip now see it's swinging down there now there you go and here now will be joined the uh, points uh the junctions we created earlier at the outer edge of the wall plate and uh, that is your that is your uh, dihedral angle shaded in, in green here so it's not too many steps really and here is a sectional view of your hip. Uh, I'm bringing it in here just to show you how it'll look if you're playing it on. If you want to play, if you want to. And you'd have this done before you'd mark the bird's mouth, by the way. This is the first, if you are going to put down the here the angle. And here is the bank and bevel uh, that you could play in and stud. Um, you know, so that's something you can do as well. Um, you have that option as well. Uh, so, and obviously the smaller side is on the crown end of the roof. Note, now that you've completed this exercise, you should have the common crown and hip rafters marked, uh, including deductions. The jack diminishes for both sets of jacks. Uh, your bird's mouth positions were determined for the crowns and uh, common and hip. And positions of your wild plates, back and bevel, the hedral angle. And now you should have a deeper understanding 